Hi, I'm Barbara Daly Blanchard, and in the summer I'm in Maple Springs, New York, which is about three hours away from here. Um, this is wildfire. As you can see, I'm a contemporary artist. Uh, I don't have the background of most of the rest of the people here. I have several college degrees, and my total number of art credits is zero. <laughs> so it's kind of seat of the pants. But I got kind of taken by the notion of how you could put all kinds of color in something. And I've managed to confuse a lot of people along the way, which was at least half of what this was all about. And this started as a photograph of what I will describe as an object in nature. And it doesn't really matter what it was, because what I was looking for was lights and darks. Think of light and shadow, think of light and dark. And I took a bunch of pictures, picked one that looked no worse than the rest of them, put it on the computer, tossed it into Photoshop Elements, and then abstracted it. And by the time I was done abstracting, you couldn't tell what the object was anyhow, so it doesn't matter. And, and then I converted it to grayscale. And what that did is it gave me blacks and whites and everything in between. And then I reintroduced color. And if any of you are familiar with overhead projectors and the transparencies that you can put on so that you can have a little red in certain places and some blue someplace else and that kind of thing, you can do the same kind of thing with Photoshop elements. But I started by putting a pale yellow wash for the painters in here on this, which would be about that color right there. Uh, that took the white out of it. And then I just started adding irregular, varying opacity layers on top of it. And of course, if you put a uh, light green, uh, irregularly shaped uh, object with a good bit of opacity in it, and you, pu you put it over a dark area, one of the blacks or the dark grays, you could get something like this, or you could get something like this, or you could get something like that. So between the lights and darks and the opacities and the multiple layers of color, which I was able to add all strangely and irregularly shaped with absolutely no planning. And this is what I got. Then it was just picking the colors. After I got this thing from the computer, it was printed on fabric. Oh. So it was printed on fabric, and then it was heavily quilted. There's about 100 hours of quilting in there. It was kind of redefined eternity. Um, but what happens is when you put all this irregular transparency, 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 plus the natural object once you abstract it, you get a lot of irregularities. So the whole thing comes together, and I can get color shifts doing this that I could never piece, and that I couldn't create, and that I couldn't even imagine, but magically I get them. <laughs> a happy accident. <laughs> and when I put this in down below, and I stood back and I looked at it, and of course you can read anything into this that you want, but what I saw was the prairie wildfires where the grass has caught, and this can be mountains, it can be sky, it can be anything you want it to be, or it can be something totally different. But I just, I, it named itself at that point. And I would rather do almost anything other than name a quilt. You know? <laughs>